so firstly i wish all of you a very happy mental health day the world health organization defines health as a state of physical mental social and spiritual well being but what happens unfortunately is all of us we concentrate more only on physical well being and we fail to realize that it's the mental well being which is so important that if the mental well being is nice it can lead to spiritual well being it can lead to social well being and it can lead to physical well being also all of you must have heard of psychosomatic diseases psychosomatic diseases are the diseases caused by the mind the mind causes diseases and these diseases affect the body like for example if we are hyper anxious we get hyper acidity if we are too much into stress it can disrupt disturb our bowel movements it can cause ulcerative colitis this is called as psychosomatic diseases now imagine how powerful the mind is if the mind is diseased it can disease the body also the reverse is also true if the mind is healthy the body can also become healthy and that's where you know the the concept of healing the body with the help of mind comes in we can heal our body with the help of our mind because the mind can cause disease to the body the mind can heal the disease of the body also and therefore remaining mentally healthy is very 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 important to compare it how to become mentally healthy for that first thing we have to understand what is the mind all of us know where is the brain all of us know where is the heart all of us know where is the lung but none of us know where is the mind uh, we 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 all think we know i have a mind and my mind thinks but medical science also today you know we are struggling to find out where exactly the mind is located you know uh, so difficult and we talk about you know our movies talk about mind being present in the heart dil dil mere dil mein khayal aaya dil to bachcha hai dil to pagal hai and all these things but still we are not able to locate where the mind is and that that mind actually is a very subtle thing it's a very subtle thing you know and we have to literally study our mind and firstly most important most important what the theme for this year is that mental health a universal human right and as uh, riya madam was talking about mental health that we have to firstly firstly remove the stigma of mental diseases you know today also it happens many times that if somebody is mentally diseased and then uh, you know that person feels ashamed to approach a psychiatrist that person feels uh, little uh, you know uncomfortable telling others that i am weak i am my mind is disturbed i am weak minded i have problem in my mind i am taking medications so like today we have almost kind of removed the stigma of somebody who is suffering from tb or somebody who is suffering from hiv similarly we have to remove this stigma of anybody who is suffering from the mind now all of us have different kind of bodies right uh, some of you you know can dance for one hour some of you can dance for two hours some of you can take stress in life some of you uh, who are when exposed to stress you immediately fall sick you develop a 
throat infection, you develop uh, uh, what we call as uh, common cold. So these are some things. And some of you who stay awake for days and nights together and you don't fall sick. So your body is different. Your friend's body is different. So we accept it. So whenever we go for a picnic, some people, they just go climbing up and up and up and up. And some people, they get tired and they are not able to climb. They get they halfway through, they stop. So everybody's body is different. Like everybody's body is different, we need to understand that everybody's mind is also different. Some of us get tensed. Some of us don't get tensed. Some of us feel anxious and some of us don't feel anxious. And we have to accept each other and each other's mental and mind status. Some of us may need medications to sustain in this the stress of this world. So help them. Like a person uh, of thalassemia, he needs blood. So you don't look down upon him. We, we understand that this blood is needed for a thalassemia patient. Right? Some anemia patient, he needs blood. We don't, we, that is not a stigma that he needs blood. So similarly, somebody who's, because that person's body is weak. Similarly, somebody's body is, mind is weak. He may need some medication. He may need some counseling. He may need some guidance. He may need some mental support. Like some people who are, uh, you know, born without legs. Some are born without hands and some are born without eyes. So if somebody is born without eyes, it's our natural tendency to help that person. Right? We naturally start helping that person. And we naturally start helping that person. Somebody, some blind person wants to cross the road. So you don't look blindness as a stigma. You go to that person and you catch his hand and you make him cross the road. Right? Similarly, if some person who has a mental disease and has difficulty in crossing in the life, its events, we should never look at it as a stigma. We have to understand that it's my duty. It's my duty to help such a person. Uh, in my introduction, I had not written that I was warden of a hostel. I worked as a warden of a hostel for 18 years. And I'm very proud to share with all of you that those 18 years, you know, I when I became the warden of that hostel, there were unfortunately so many suicides in that hostel before I became warden. Rather, one of the batch uh, before I became warden, five students had committed suicide. And then I took over as the warden of the hostel. So my friends started telling me that this, this is how the students of this hostel are disturbed. So why, why don't... Uh, you know, why are you becoming warden of this hostel? Are you able to handle all of them? Will you be able to handle all of them? I said, no problem. No problem. Let me deal. And I'm very proud in telling all of you today that 18 years when I served as a warden of that hostel, where every six months and every one year, there used to be a suicide. For 18 years, there was not a single suicide uh, you know, happening in that hostel. Not a single suicide. But it's not that the students didn't attempt suicide. Okay? The suicides, attempts were there. It's not that students were not disturbed during those 18 years. But what me and my colleague, uh, Dr. Sunil Koire, we did is we developed a support system. And we gave confidence to all those 
500 to 1000 students staying in our hostels that we are available for you always anytime you are disturbed whether it is one o'clock in the night or two o'clock in the night i had students who came disturbed to me at 10 o'clock in the night saying that sir i don't think i'll pass so i tell him no you study for the next paper 12 o'clock the student comes back to me sir i don't think i'll pass i said no don't worry you study for the next paper i have told students okay you sit in my house and study if you are feeling anxious by the time I go, I call the parents of that uh, student and the parents, I tell them, you start. Next day morning, the parents reach. Till then, till morning, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, I'm with the student. I'm talking to him very lovingly. I'm understanding he's under anxiety. Then we take him to the psychiatry. We give him anti-anxiolytic drugs and we help. We help. Okay? So like, if somebody is blind, if somebody is, you know, handicapped, we don't say that you don't have right to stay in this world. Because you, because of your walking, you know, the traffic becomes jam and people, other people have to walk slow. No. We say that no. If you don't have eyes, then I will become your eyes. If you don't have legs, then I will become your legs. If you don't have hands, so then I will become your hand. So similarly, if your mind is weak, then I am there for you. And that is the kind of support system we have to provide to anyone and everyone who has a mental disease. Now, regarding our own self, regarding our own self, how do we stay mentally healthy? Because see, if you want to help others who are mentally uh, having some problems, unfortunately, then you also have to be mentally healthy to help them. Like for example, if you, in during the COVID times, you know, there were volunteers who were distributing food, who were distributing medicines, who were, who were working, who were distributing grocery. Now, who were these volunteers? These volunteers were the healthy people. Okay. If these volunteers themselves had some disease, they could not help others because then they will be at risk of getting disease themselves. So all those volunteers working during the COVID pandemic, they themselves were healthy. So if you have to help others who have some issues with the mind, then you should try yourself to become mentally healthy. Now, how does a person become physically healthy? There are a few factors for that. And the, one of the factors uh, for staying healthy is, there are three factors, I would say. Diet, sleep, good sleep, good diet, and good exercise. These three things, they keep you healthy. Now let us talk about diet. So good diet keeps your maintains your physical health, a healthy diet. And what spoils our physical health? Junk food. Similarly, for mental health also, we have to follow a diet for our mind. Now what is diet for our mind? Diet for our mind is positive thoughts. Always having positive thoughts. That's the diet for the mind. Okay. I, I always tell a very nice story of a horse, horse, man, horse rider. What this horse rider used to do is he used to put children on the horse, take them around the village and charge their parents five rupees. That's how he was earning 100 rupees, 200 rupees, 500 rupees every day. Very happy with whatever he was earning. And he had tremendous faith in God. So whenever people used to ask, are you happy? Are you satisfied? He said, yeah, whatever happens, happens for the best. Because everything happens by the grace of the Lord. One day he lost his horse. So when he lost his horse, uh, the villagers came to him. Are this is so bad? You lost your horse. He said, that's fine. Whatever happens, happens for good. So no issues. 
I lost my horse, no issues, no issues. And then uh, he goes searching for his horse and suddenly he realizes that his horse is in the forest and along with this horse, 25, he found, finds 25 more horses. So then all the villagers come to him and say, oh, you lost one horse, but that horse came back with 25 more horses. So nice. He said, that's fine. Everything happens, happens for good. This is positive thinking. So when his son was training those 25 horses, his son fell down from one of the horse, broke his leg. Now again, the villagers come to him and say, oh, that's so bad. Your son, you know, he broke his leg. He said, that's fine. You know, whatever happens, happens for the best. So then there was a war declared with the neighboring country and the king made it compulsory for all the boys in the village, young boys in the village to join the army, except for this person's boy, because his leg was broken. His leg was fractured. So he was not forcefully admitted in the military. Again, the villagers came, oh, so nice, so nice, his leg was broken. He said, no, now stop coming to me saying, so nice, so bad, so nice, so bad. Even when bad things happened, you came to me so bad, so bad, I thought so good, so good. This is positive thinking. So we, in our life, have to develop positive thinking. This is the diet. This positive thinking is the diet for a healthy Mind. And negative and what food we avoid to be physically healthy, we avoid junk food. So to be mentally healthy, we have to avoid junk thoughts. <laughs> By junk thoughts, what I mean is By junk thoughts, thoughts, what I mean is that we have to avoid the negative thoughts. We have to avoid all the grudges which, which we keep for people, against people. That five years back you said this to me. Ten years back you had insulted me. Last month you shouted at me. So you know, uh, do, do we do such things with our family? That do we get, do we stop talking to our mother because she shouted at us? So mother has been shouting at us since we are four year, five year old, right? And till date, the mother will keep on correcting us and shouting us. So do we get angry with her and do we tell her that, no, I'm not going to speak to you. Why? Because she is a family member. The current uh, G20 summits which are going all, all over India, these G20 summits are propagating one thing, that is Vasudeva Kutumbakam. That the world, the whole world is a family. All of us are family. Okay? All of us are family. All of us are connected with each other. Why? Because there is one God sitting on the top. We all say that he is our father. And if God, that God is our father, then all of us are brothers and sisters. So we should stop looking at each other. So we should stop looking at each other as enemy. He is my enemy and he is my friend. Okay. So when we stop, stop discriminating like this, that why we should stop discriminating? Because we believe in this concept that Vasudeva Kutumbakam. Vasudeva Kutumbakam. That there is a God and he is our Supreme Father and we all are related to each other. Okay, so when we start looking at each other as family members, so we will never get angry. With your brothers, with your sisters in your childhood, you must have fought so many times. But did you keep a grudge against them? That my, my sister, you know, my brother, you ate my ice cream, you ate my chocolate, it, I had kept in the fridge for me. No, no grudge because we treated them as family. So we need to learn to teach the, treat the whole world as a family. And when we do that, 
then there will be no grudge. So we avoid negative thoughts and most important in that negative thoughts is the grudge. So therefore it is said that remember the good things, only remember the good things people have done for us. Okay? And forget the bad things anybody has done to us. That is what we mean by that is what we mean by saying that we should avoid we should avoid junk thoughts. So for physical health, we avoid junk food and for good mental health, we avoid junk thoughts. Then the second thing I would prescribe is exercise. Good exercise. Now physical health, we need exercise. Everybody who wants a good physique, right? They have to go to the gym and they have to do exercise. Now all of us want a very strong mind, right? All of us, they want a very strong mind. And this strong mind is needed. All of us need a strong mind. Like we have seen in this movie, Munna Bhai, Dr. Asthana, his hand doesn't move because his hand was, he was, his mind was very strong. So similarly, we have to develop a very, very strong mind. So for physical health, we do physical exercise and for mental health, we need to do mental exercise. Now, what is this mental exercise? The mental exercise is, mental exercise is meditation. Meditation. Okay, you must have heard from your grandfather, you must have heard from your grandmother that, uh, that, that, meditation. some meditation. One second, do some meditation and and uh, you will be peaceful, you will be able to study nicely, you will be stress free and we just hear it from this year and leave it from this year. We never take it seriously. We never take it seriously, right? We never took it seriously and see, sometimes you know, our friends keep on telling us that experience this. See, have you eaten Suksagar's Pao Bhaji? Very nice, very nice. But we say, okay, okay. Please go to Chaupati. Please have Suksagar's Pao Bhaji. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. One day. Please go to Guru Krupa Hotel. Please have Samosa. Okay. But unless we go to that Guru Krupa Hotel and have the Samosa over there once and we taste it once and then we realize, oh, wow. This is so good. So unless we try it we are not going to have the experience. So similarly, people must have kept on telling you, do some meditation, do some, it will keep your mind fresh, it will keep your mind healthy, it will keep your mind stress-free, but we never do it. So like you went to Guru Krupa Hotel and ate the samosa one day, and then you realize, oh, I should have eaten before. Similarly, once you start practicing meditation, you will start experiencing, you will start experiencing the inner peace. You will start experiencing the inner peace. Okay? And best way of meditations are in every religion, there is chanting of God's name. So whichever religion you belong to, you can chant God's name. If you are an atheist, still there is a scope for meditation. You can just meditate on your breath, incoming breath and outgoing breath. Okay? This is kind of one of the easiest way of uh, meditation. So you can always practice meditation. Uh, so that is it. And then next is sleep. So for good body, I told good have physical health, we need three things. One is uh, good diet. Two is exercise and three is sleep. For mental health also, we spoke about mental diet, we spoke about mental exercise, which is meditation. And the third is uh, what we call as sleep, the third factor. For physical health, you know why sleep is important? Because all healing, it happens in sleep. All healing happens in sleep. Therefore, those people who sleep less, they fall sick. Similarly, similarly, when we talk about mental health, good sleep, Sleeping in time, 
is also very 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 important you know so many times we see mental diseases are precipitated uh, people have attacks of mental illness and then in the history we find that they have not been sleeping well okay so like all the healing all the healing of the body happens during sleep all the healing of the mind also happens during sleep so many times you know we have some issues with problems and then we sleep and then we get up and then we feel fresh therefore we say that start a new day start a every day a new day with a new zeal with new enthusiasm so we have to take good sleep for good mental health okay so these are uh, some of the tips which uh, i wanted to share with all of you also uh, from my side uh, I, i i i would like to give some more tips and we have to understand that why my mind you know uh, is troubled there is a very nice sanskrit shloka which appears in the 6th chapter of gita uh, this this shloka is nothing to do with any religion this shloka where lord krishna says bandhur atmat manatasya yenatmay vatmana chit this shloka says that uncontrolled mind is the worst enemy and controlled mind is the best friend so we have to realize that when my mind is uncontrolled it just goes violent it just goes violent and when my mind is under control when my mind is under control my mind becomes peaceful you know you must have realized that when your mind is under control you can study nicely when your mind is under control you can have good relations with everyone when your mind is under control you have peace with your family in your family but when mind is not out is not in control we go home we disturb the family when we we go to our friends we disturb the friend circle we have strained relations with everyone so always we should try to get the mind under our control okay therefore uh, it is it is said that what is the use of winning the whole world if you cannot win over your mind so we have to continuously strive we have to con- for good mental health we have to make a positive effort and we have to continuously strive towards you know they are get, getting some control over our mind so keep on always watchful about your mind about the negative thoughts so immediately you realize try to remove the negative thoughts bring in positive thoughts good look good in everyone this uh, uh state of maharashtra where we where we live is called as the land of saints land of saints and uh, you know one of the saints he very nicely he prayed to god that what i want what i want so he says mukhi naam sada let me chant your name o god always so you see every religion you know whether it is a christian whether it is a muslim when a muslim person always chanting god's name they carry a beads they carry beads on with them white color beads and hindus are chanting god's name so he says mukhi naam sada santan je darshan jani janardhan let me see god in everybody's heart jani janardhan aisa bhav let me develop that kind of a mood where i respect everybody everybody like when we when we go to a temple when we go to a mosque when we go to the church how we respect god there right we go down we 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 you know hold our hands we do like this we do like this before god so the saint says that let me see god and respect everyone and understand that he is there in everybody's heart so this when we develop such kind of mood you know then we don't develop grudges 
we 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 develop totally a life which is dependent uh, on God. We become stress free. Currently, what happens is we have our plan. God has His plan, and you know what is the cause of mental stress? Because my plan does not match with God's plan, and because my plan does not match with God's plan, I become stressful. So living in harmony with God is also very very important. I tell the story of a man who once was lost on an island. So what happened is he his ship was wrecked and he reached the island. And when he reached the island, he realized that he was the only person on the island. And then he started living there. He started collecting wood. He started, you know, staying there. And one day when he was coming back from the forest, he saw that his, his hut, which he had built, there was a lightning which struck the hut and the hut was on fire. So then he looked towards the sky because all of us have a feeling that God is there in the sky. He's there in our heart also. He's there everywhere. But then we have a feeling Uparwala, he's there on the top. So then he started telling, you know, God that, you know, I am staying alone on this island and you are sitting on the top and you are burning my hut. And immediately he heard a sound that, do you want our help? Do you want to come with us? Then he looked and then he saw that was a ship's captain. He, had, he said, we, our ship is here. We saw some fire here. In our naval language, if somebody is stuck on an island, they just put fire. So we thought that you have put on fire because you want to be rescued. So we came to rescue you. He said, yeah, 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 yeah I want to be rescued. Although I have not put this fire. This fire has come from the top, from the lightning. But I realized God's plan. So then he looks at the sky and again says, God, I am sorry. I'm sorry, oh God. I didn't understand your plan. So this is also one way of reducing mental stress. We make our own plans. We, we, we want our plan to work. But God has already made a plan for you better. So why don't we follow that plan? So when, when there is mismatch in these two plans, then we end up stressing ourselves. So live life one day at a time. Live life one day at a time help others. Sometimes we live only for my happiness. I like to eat this. I like to do this. I like to see this. I like to hear this. So whole world is around I. And that's how sometimes we suffer from breakdowns. Because I am not able to see this. I am not able to hear this. I am not able to enjoy this. So what should be our source of happiness? Let me give happiness to others. Let me serve others. Therefore, it is said, if you want to become happy for a day, for an hour, sleep for an hour. If you want to become happy for one day, then go for a picnic. If you want to become happy for one month, get married. If you want to get become happy for one year, get somebody's property, inherit some uncle's property who is unmarried. But if you want to become happy for whole life, then you need to serve others. You need to serve others. When we start serving others, you know, sometimes we we give a dog a biscuit, a cat a biscuit, you give some food to a beggar and the beggar blesses you, a mother with a child, and you feel so nice. You feel so nice because of that help. So these are the things which enrich our mind, giving happiness to others. So we should learn to give happiness to others and by giving happiness to others, we should become. By this, nobody can stop you from becoming happy. All of us want to become happy, right? Everybody wants a good mental health. I'm giving you tips for this good mental health. Tips for good mental health is make others happy. Make other person's mind happy. You know, give happiness to other person's mind and in this world, everything boomerangs. You Give the world a bad experience and the universe will give you bad experience. You give everybody a good experience, the universe will give you a good experience. And this theme for today's uh, world or this year's World Mental Health the Day, that it's a human right to be mentally healthy. So therefore, I, on this World Mental Health Day, I, I, I wish that all of us 
you know we should pledge we should pledge that me i dr yuvraj bosle whatever is your name i take a pledge today that one thing is helping mentally uh, challenge people disturb person this is person another thing most important is not causing mental pain to others very very important so when we shout at somebody we put that person in you know what happens with somebody shouts at that whole day is destroyed you go home depressed same home same house same society same trees around your house same nice wind is blowing but you are disturbed why because somebody has shouted at you. so when you shout at somebody when you treat somebody badly that person is also mentally disturbed so helping a mentally sick person is our duty but not hurting anybody's mind that is also something which on this world mental health day i should pledge that uh, i will help the deceased person is one thing i will not cause disease to other person that is also a vow uh, we should take on this world mental health day so be very careful be very nice be very gentle in your talks be very comfortable be very accommodative be very tolerant and be very magnanimous uh while treating with others like our family members by this all of us will start living in this society full of love right so rabindranath tagore in his uh, poem he says that where the mind is without fear and the head is held up where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic war okay so this is what you know he he dreams into that heaven I, my father let my country awake okay so where the mind is without fear why there is fear because again i i told you we have our plan and there is a, always a fear that my plan will be destroyed take life as it comes take life as it comes okay so where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls destroy all these narrow domestic walls of religion of community of caste and let's stay in this world like family members and let's make this world a very very happy place so wish you all a very happy mental health day with that i stop here thank you so much thank you so much sir